What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at four in loops, specifically going over some examples of how to actually use them, what they are, and why they're useful. So with that being said, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and let's get into it. So we're going to be working with a playground. So let's open up Xcode and create a blank playground. Let's call it for in. And once it creates itself, let's uh, move it on over here and also expand this window to give ourselves a little more room to work and start talking about for in loops. So as the name implies, a for in loop is a way where you can iterate over a thing in a collection, hence the name for in. So let's start by creating an array of numbers, which will be our collection to start off with. Let's throw some more numbers in here. Should be good. So if we wanted to print out every number in this array, we could do something along the lines of this and we can copy and paste it a bunch of times to get each value so if we actually open up our console come down here and hit this play button you'll see that we do get our prints out for those numbers but what if we wanted to do this with an array with let's say like a thousand numbers in it what we could do is we could say for thing in array print out thing and if we come down here again, if we clear this, pause, and hit play again, we'll see that we get all of our numbers printed out in order, but with less code. So what we have essentially done here is we've told Swift for each element, whatever it may be, we're putting it into thing in this collection, do something with it. So this is a pretty trivial example, but once we start using a little more complex types and classes, it gets pretty interesting. So with that being said, let's create a more complex type, relatively speaking, and get into a cooler example. So let's uh, get rid of that, make sure we come down here and pause this execution. And we're gonna create a person struct up here. Let's get rid of my antivirus pop-up. Uh, but we're gonna create, let's say, a person with a name, they're going to have an age, they'll have a gender, which will be a gender enum that we'll create in a second, and a nationality. Let's create this gender enum. They could be male or female. Now let's create an array with person objects in it. So we'll actually call this people, and we'll say, let's create like three or four. person, John, 22, male, American, let's copy and paste this a few more times, Italian, uh, let's see, let's just stick with Italian, and let's do female and female. Bree and Katie make this Dan and Mark. So let's say in our loop now, let's actually change this to uh, for person in people. Let's say we want to do something for all the male people and do something for all the female people. So we're going to say if person dot gender, rather we can actually do is we can do switch person.gender, if they're a male, do something, and whoops, if they're a female, something else. So let's create a function down here, and we're going to say handle person, we're going to pass in a gender and an age, like so. And what we're going to do, actually, let's change this to handle male and handle female. What we can do in here is we can say handle female. I spelled female correctly. Let's actually move these functions above 
this for loop so we can reference it. But we're gonna come in here now and we're gonna say handle female, like so. The gender, of course, is female and the age is person.age. Same thing up here for males, handle male, male, and person.age. So in these functions, we could have other functionality that we can now take knowing that the results that we get in here are males and we get their age and females and age. So let's say we wanna have an app that curates our content, that personalizes it based on the gender. And we could even do something along the lines of privacy controls. You can say if age is greater than 18, or greater than or equal to 18, show other stuff. Otherwise we can do show child safe stuff. So with this example, what I want you to understand is you can use a for loop to filter stuff, you can use a for loop to transform stuff in a collection. It's a really good linear way to iterate over an entire array. And that basically does it for four in loops. And I hope you guys understand the power of them, the simplicity of them. And in industry and in, in my own apps and in your apps, inevitably, you'll definitely end up using for loops, uh, for in loops rather. And they're definitely pretty useful. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you haven't done so already. Subscribe if you're new for daily Swift tutorials, then I'll catch you in the next one.